Hello, my name is Keith Peterson. It's a snowy afternoon in Illinois today, a little cold, not a good day to fly. And my Abaddon databases need to be updated. My 550, my 540, both need database updates. So it's time to do that little project. Um, when you do a database update on an Abaddon, anything like that that you're doing in the airplane, you don't want to use battery power to do that. It's not good for the battery to run for a long time. And uh, you know, you have to run for a while, 30, 45 minutes maybe. And uh, so you want to use external power for that. Now the Cardinal is really good for that kind of a system because when you plug in, it bypasses the whole battery thing and everything. It powers the avionics directly. And we'll show you that in a little bit. And of course, what you need is a special jumper cable. In fact, I'll show you the port here first. There's a little port back here in the Cardinal RG. This is where the battery plugs in. It has a little cover that tops off. It's just two screws. One thing I've learned is if you put this thing on the wrong side up, the lines don't match up. <laughs> so. That's a little detail. I've done that wrong before a time or two. So obviously it takes a special port to connect up to that. But I have one of those. These are not cheap, but they're available. So there's the, uh, the fancy jumper cable. It's got the three holes, and two big ones and a small one. The small one's there to guarantee polarity. So that plugs in there. And um, now all my battery stuff is on the other side of the airplane, so I'll just scoot that right under. And uh, we'll pick it up from there. So here's the uh, rest of the equipment that I use for doing this. It's uh, an old lawn tractor. It's got a 12 volt battery in it. Just uh, kind of a farmer fleet thing where they get 20 bucks for those, 25 maybe. You can just have one on a, on a piece of wood that works as well. We've got a, uh, a battery charger here. And uh, I'll start by just putting a battery charger onto the battery. Try not to short things out here. And that would be more exciting of a YouTube video than I ever wanted to build. Uh, that one pretty wide. So the setting I'm going to go to here is going to be uh, a 40 amp 12 volt setting. So we'll see how that does. Of course, what the uh, battery here is going to do is it's going to provide some balance to the uh, to the voltage. So I don't want to generate, um, you know, like a, a, a 20 volt input into my airplane. I'd like to have it be a 12 to 14 volt input. So by putting this battery in here, that's going to lock it at about that 12 to 14 volt range. So um, get the uh, ground on the right post, that would be really smart. If you plug in this one, what we'll notice is uh, the airplane will start up when I plug this in because I've got it already plugged into the airplane. So we hear the contactor click in, and the avionics system is now powered in the airplane. The battery is not powered because there's a contactor that stops that from happening. So this powers the airframe without attaching to the battery, and uh, we'll be able to hit the master switch inside. Now you say, why 40 amps? Well, it's up to 40 amps. And what I want to do is probably moderate this a little bit. It's sort of a fast charge mode for a regular battery, and that mode will work on this. In fact, on this battery right now, it's pulling 9 amps. Um, the airplane is pulling some current as well out of that 9 amps. In fact, if I disconnect this, we can see that it's pulling about 7 amps into this little battery. This battery hasn't been used probably long time. So I took the airplane to a couple more amps. When I do run the airplane, when I turn the avionics in the airplane, this battery charge will come up a little bit. I'll be able to see the current flow on the instrumentation in the airplane. I'll be able to watch the voltage on the instrumentation of the airplane. But basically I'll have a smooth battery um, powered going into the airplane. If you just hook the battery charger up to the airplane, the voltage is going to vary a lot more and the waveform is going to be a lot worse. So um, it'll hum, for example, because this is not a very well rectified power supply. It's not smooth at all. It's just like half wave or maybe full wave rectified. So it's a very sinusoidal voltage. Even though it's DC, it only passes one direction. It's very sinusoidal in its voltage levels. So the battery will damp that out, make it a lot flatter. A lot of times, if you just hook a battery charger directly up to the airplane, this way it'll hum. Like things, the servos will hum, the radials will hum. It's not a, not a fun feeling. It feels very uh, unnatural. So the battery smooths all that out, gives me confidence here that if the power goes out or if the battery charger uh, doesn't have enough juice or something like that, this will carry it through the process so that it doesn't change right in the middle. It doesn't lose power right in the middle of doing the data update. So we'll go into the cabin now and uh, do the cabin side of it. Okay, we're in the cabin, in the cockpit. As you can see, the lights have come on. The uh, airplane is powered, even though uh, the master switch is off. So I don't need to have the lights on. Now I can monitor the voltage right here on the JPI. As you can see, it's about 12.6, 12.5 volts. It's a pretty good number. I can also see on this instrument over here, the, um, the voltage that's on my ship's battery, which is not connected to this power that I'm doing. 
So I can always watch and see what the voltage is. This is a really nice instrument. It stays on all the time. It takes less power than a running clock, but it always tells me what the voltage is on that battery. Even if the airplane's off, if there's nothing turned on at all, it always knows what the voltage is at a very low current. So I'm going to turn off a couple of things that we don't need here. We don't need the fan. We don't need the, uh, the audio panel. And then we'll be ready to turn on the avionics master and uh, start loading databases. Okay, we're going to have to listen over the winding gyros here. But basically what I'm going to do now, I've uh, got it done that mode. I'm going to hit select all. And I'm going to say proceed. And away it goes. So it's going to upload charts, nav data, obstacles. And it will do that for an extended period of time. As you see, the little airplane flies along the bottom of the screen. And... Um, that's the process. You'll see the percentages grow as we go along there. So, no reason to watch it. And then we'll uh, disconnect everything and we'll be done. Well, we're all done now. I think it took less than 45 minutes, actually. And uh, nothing left to do but reverse our trail on this. Do it off our master. Put our trigger breakers back in. Disconnect the battery and the charger in the back. And uh, disconnect the uh, cable from the back of the airplane. And we'll be all done. That's all there is to it. Thanks for riding along.